On Friday the 13th, Netflix launched a brand new original series called Mindhunter, which is about serial killers. And today we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into the psychology about it. And if you haven't seen it yet, don't worry because this is going to be spoiler free. So stick around. Psychopaths are convinced that there's nothing wrong with them. So these men are virtually impossible to study. Yet you have found a way in near perfect laboratory conditions. Hello ladies. That's what makes this so exciting and potentially so far reaching. What's up? everybody this is Chris from the rewired soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution and yes today we are going to be talking about the new original series mind hunter on Netflix so if you have not heard about this show or haven't watched it it is about some FBI agents back in the 1970s it takes place around 1977 and it's when they first start using criminal psychology to try to get into the minds of serial killers to prevent more serial killers from killing more people to track down serial killers and all that kind of stuff so a lot of it is them interviewing different serial killers who have already been locked up trying to get in their heads see how they think see what motivates them and all that kind of stuff i've always been fascinated by these serial killer stories and i think mainly because of what this show does i just want to know what the heck is going on in their head I'll be brutally honest with you, I have not finished the series yet, and that's one of the reasons why there's gonna be no spoilers here, but everything I've watched so far is amazing, so check it out, it's definitely awesome. But what I want to talk about today is some of the psychology behind the series. This won't really spoil anything, and it shouldn't be a surprise to many people, but a lot of the serial killers who are based on real people, real serial killers, a lot of them had a lot of tra childhood trauma. And I just wanna talk about that for a little bit. Because in most cases, like 99.9% .9 of cases, People who suffer from childhood trauma are not going to become serial killers. This is just the way their trauma manifests and there's a bunch of other factors in there. But it's important to realize how much childhood trauma affects us later in life. It stays with us forever. And this is something that I just really wanted to talk about and this show does a great job talking about it because so many adults walking around the earth today do not realize how much their life as a kid affected how they are now. So I'll use myself as an example first and foremost. I am the child of an alcoholic mother. Some of you have seen me do live streams with her. I love my mom, we have an amazing relationship today partially because she got sober about 12 years ago, I got sober a little over five years ago and our relationship is awesome. But something that was really eye-opening to me was when I picked up a book called Adult Children of Alcoholics if you are the child of an alcoholic, even if you were adopted, I highly recommend that you pick up this book. I'll put a link in the description down below. Um, but this book completely just opened up my eyes to so many patterns that I was getting into as an adult. It started explaining to me why I had so many trust issues, why I had issues at work, why I dated the women that I dated. All of these things were attributed to my childhood. Um, it also explained to me why I used to be a habitual liar. One of the symptoms of adult children of alcoholics is that we lie even though it would have been easier to tell the truth and we don't know why we do it. And so much of that is explained and I started to see how all of these traits were carrying on in my life even though it was 30 years ago when it happened. This book, Adult Children of Alcoholics, not only do I highly recommend that any child of an alcoholic or addict read it, I always tell my clients that if they have children, they should read the book too to look out for potential signs that may arise because real quick statistic, a child of an alcoholic or addict has an 80% chance of becoming an addict themselves, but pretty much 100% of them well, let's say closer to 90% of them will develop these symptoms and they'll have issues with relationships later on in life. The interesting thing about this book too, the author, Janet Wojtis, she actually wrote another book because children who were sexually abused, they also had similar symptoms uh, to adult children as alcoholics. So I'll put a link to that in the description below as well if you wanna check that out. Um, 
This, these are things that are happening on this very subconscious level that so many people refuse to address. A lot of it has to do with trust issues. A lot of it has to do with relationships. There are people who keep getting into toxic relationship after toxic relationship and they don't realize a lot of that stems from their childhood. Eventually, my mother and I are going to put up a course at therewiredsoul.com discussing different relationship patterns and why a lot of people keep getting into these bad relationships or they are having trouble in a very healthy relationship. For example, with me, my parents split up when I was four years old. Um, both of my parents had very unhealthy relationships. So growing up, I never had a good example of what a healthy relationship looks like. What I saw as a loving relationship was not loving at all. My mother had issues with my stepdad. My father, he had issues with the women that he dated. And that is what I saw. So children who grow up in a house where the not necessarily the parents stay together but they have a good relationship together they're less likely to get into toxic relationships later so a lot of stuff for me that came up that I saw these patterns later in life um, were happening to me still came from um, an inventory a personal inventory that I did and pretty soon I'm going to uh, give you all a worksheet where you can start doing this and diving deep into your past and seeing what kind of traits that you have based on your childhood. But again, this is the rewired soul. We talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. So if you are having any difficulties or struggles in life, um, be sure to reach out to somebody, seek out therapy, seek out support groups, um, read some of the books that I've recommended that are in the description below because they're going to enlighten you and open up your eyes. And then once we acknowledge that there is a problem, we can start working towards the solution. Because a lot of people neglect it and they refuse to look at that stuff and they continue on this pattern of destruction or getting into toxic relationships or having issues at work or having issues with friends. And you know, the point of life is to, you know, find our own version of happiness regardless of what we have. So I highly recommend that you check out some of these books. Um, the links in uh, the description, they are affiliate links. So what that means is that they do not cost you anything extra, but they help support this channel so I can make more videos like this. So if you have Netflix, check out this show, Mind Hunters, especially if you're interested in serial killers and all that kind of stuff, or even psychology, check it out. I might do some more videos on this series. If you want me to, put comments down below or give this video a thumbs up. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't yet, make sure you click the little round subscribe button right below this box. And also to the left of me, there are some thumbnails. Click or tap on them. Check out some more videos on this channel. I have over 100 mental health and addiction videos for you to watch. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.